Hello, welcome to Made in Bluebell Wood, my YouTube channel. I'm Sarah and I'm all about mindfulness through craft. So every week my plan is to demonstrate a craft that is really easy to do, is very cheap to make, slash or slash free. And number three, will that, that you'll find relaxing, that will help um, to maintain um, your good your good mental health basically and if you've seen me before then welcome back if not then it's really nice to have you and I hope that you enjoy this little sneaky peek into my crafty life <laughs> so this week I thought I would share with you three different ways of making bows I've had a few people ask me about this um, I've never learnt the official way to make bows, I've just sort of made these three ways up. So whether they are proper ways or not, I really don't know. And I'm using a new camera, um, so I'm just winging it really. So I hope this comes out alright, but we'll see, won't we? <laughs> so the three different types of bows I'm going to show you are these um, the first one is made out of fabric the second one is quite a delicate little bow made out of just some simple string and the third one will be this little um, double layered uh, ribbon bow and then I added a button um, in the middle just as an extra little touch really so the first one is going to be the fabric one and you can use, I mean you can use anything to make bows with really. You've got the obvious, most obvious ribbon. Um, you could use lace as well. Lace ribbons are really pretty. I also got some of this baker's twine which I found quite cheap on Amazon and it's usually expensive in the shop. So you could use that to make bows. Um, I love upcycling, so and I love making fabric bows anyway. But I was given this scarf, which is really lovely. But I've got loads of scarves. Um, my daughter has got a few scarves, which she doesn't even wear the ones she's got. So I saw this scarf and I thought, I'm going to nab that and make something. or make lots of nice things out of it, really, because there's so much of it, of that fabric. So... It's a good idea to have a look around you and see what you've got. So first things first, for the fabric bow. Now, there really aren't any rules as to the size of bows, and that's why I, that's what I enjoy about bows, is that they all come out different. But they all look lovely. So you really can select any any size fabric you want so if you have a piece that big a rectangle and you fold it in half then you know that by the time you've sewn it if you just pinch it in the middle you know that's how big it's going to be so you can kind of hold it up against whatever it is you're going to use it for and you know see if that's the kind of size you want so you need to find you know, cut, find your fabric, cut your rectangular fabric and lay it right sides together. So just fold it in half and then what we're going to do is stitch all the way around the outside, leaving a little gap. Now I'm going to just use some white thread that I've got um, because of because it looks better on camera really if it wasn't on camera I would probably be using red thread so I'm just going to do a really simple I don't know what I'm actually doing here because <laughs> I'm, I'm talking and sewing at the same time I don't think my brain's quite in gear yet so I wasn't very well yesterday maybe that's why So we'll just take our time and go all the way around the edge. Okay. 
just like that. I've always thought that hand sewing is really relaxing because, and I love machine sewing, I absolutely love that, but hand sewing just makes you be still and uh, that's what mindfulness is all about, isn't it? I think we, we all need that quiet time. And if you go too fast with sewing, then it all, with hand sewing, it all gets sort of tangled up. So, oh, try not to pin yourself. So you really do have to slow down your life to do hand sewing. You don't have to be brilliant at it. As you can see, I'm most definitely not. Although it's quite weird doing it on camera because I'm trying not to be too fast, but then I don't want to go too slow either. So now I've got to the bottom, I'm going to, once I've gone round there and there, I'm going to come around this bit and I'm going to stop about here so that I've got that little gap so that we can turn it in the right way. Okay? Try and do your stitches as neatly as you can, really. And if it all comes out terribly, you can just um, unpick the thread and start again. if you want to you can whiz it under the sewing machine which I didn't think about doing but I thought would you rather hear the quite noisy sewing machine would that be more relaxing or just watching the needle go into the fabric and come out of the fabric would that be more relaxing and I thought yeah it would <laughs> so I decided to do that God, look at his hand stitching. Look, but don't look, because some of these stitches are quite bad, but never mind. When we turn it in the right way, it'll all be alright in the end. So I'm going to come up through here and go through a couple of times kind of like what you would do sort of a back stitch on a sewing machine just to secure it an extra couple of stitches then we can cut that thread off Okay, so you've got your stitches all the way on the edge and you've got your gap. Now you can turn it in the right way. See your lovely bow come into life. Whenever I make things and it's time to turn it in the right way, Inside, I'm always sort of saying, please, 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 please come out all right. <laughs> Even though I've been doing these kind of things for a long, long time now. Um, I still have that little panic. But if it don't come out all right, don't worry. Just go back and go over it. So that's your, what you've got now your fabric in the right way and we've just got to deal with this little gap here. Now if you want to you could do what they call a slip stitch which hides the thread completely. I'm just going to keep it really really simple 
and I'm going to just as I did here just do another running stitch Dark. That's a bit awkward, but never mind, these things happen. So now that's nice and secure, I'm going to just do a little running stitch to close that gap. thought doing bows would be useful across all different craft projects um, be it sort of decorating things around your home making things um, doing things like card making you can always add bows to even when you wrap presents we all use bows don't we or sort of try and tie a little bow whether we're very good at it or not so I thought these would be really useful To know or you can make a decoration out of the bows themselves which I I've done actually I've got something really pretty on my fireplace which I'll show you at the end <coughs> excuse me so I've secured that okay so you've got your rectangle and you can do the thread white like that it's not you know the end of the world but I would recommend try and do it in this case red you know in a color that's gonna that's gonna sort of be a bit subtle and be hidden so now you do the rectangle it's literally just pinch it in the middle now this one is going to come out quite funky actually because well if I do it that side I've got one side red one side stripey um, and I love things like that so I'm going to do it that side Yeah, I'm going to do that side, I think. Stuff it. We don't have to be the same, do we, all the time? That's what I love about crafts. Um, you can't get it wrong, just do whatever you feel. And bows can take a bit of manipulation, you know, so... it's not come out great don't be frightened to sort of pull it about a bit so I've literally just poked the needle in there just so that I've got something to pull on and then as you pull pretty. so that's the first bow number two isn't going to take as long as that it's the one that's made out of a ball of string this really delicate, really sweet bow. Um, I actually used both of these bows, one and two, on one project that I did, which was, for those of you that have seen my three ways with um, jars, then yes, this is another jar. I do quite often get carried away when I have a theme. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I used a little string bow there, and then for the top of it, I did a really quick little um, fabric bow. But I didn't even stitch it all around the edge, actually. I just cut it. So it's got a bit of a sort of rough, sort of more rustic look. But that just gives you an idea of uh, how you can incorporate, incorporate <laughs> even bows into other crafts. Honestly, you could stick a bow on anything and make it look better, in my opinion. It's kind of like glitter, isn't it? Add glitter and uh, something 
lovely becomes something really lovely. Now this one, I think I might have to just position myself a bit differently. So sorry if I will pull the camera, I'll try not to. Okay. So what we're going to do for this one is just get a piece of string, uh, however long you like. I'll do it on this background because you'll be able to see it more easily than white on white, won't you? So get a piece of string, however long you like, and then cross it over about halfway. Um, get your needle and thread and go through. couple of times just so you know they're attached okay then what we're going to do is just push down this bit the middle which is going to make give us this lovely little bow shape So do it a few times if you need to until you're happy with it, okay? Don't worry, it's not going to be wrong because bows are all different. Kind of like people, really. So we're going to wrap it around a few times until you think that's nice and secure. Don't worry about any little other strands of cotton you may have. We can sort them out at the end. Just try not to get your needle tangled in them. You should be okay. And then we're just going to make a little knot at the back. Go through a few times and then we're going to cut that. Give it a little snip. And then see what we think of our little bow. Ta da! Can you get rid of this little thread at the back? There you go. How cute is that little bow? Really, really sweet. I could stick these bows, God, in so many places. I really do love a bow. So I hope you you might find that one useful. And so cheap, you know, so quick and so cheap. Just a simple ball of string. I think most of us have got some string hanging around, haven't we? Twine would, would look lovely as well. So that is bow number two done. And the third bow is made of ribbon. And now if you've got thick ribbon... Um, let me just demonstrate, find a piece of ribbon to show you. If you've got quite thick ribbon, then it's very easy to make a bow, much like with the fabric ones we did. And um, it's so thick that it will make, you know, a nice bow just like that. But if you have this thinner ribbon and you want to make a bow... Um, but you don't want, you know, a tiny little bow like that. You want a bigger one. Then what I would suggest um, is doubling the ribbon up, okay? Because if you try and make a big bow out of this, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a bow like that, which to me looks a little bit gangly. If you see what I mean? I'd rather have one that's shorter and a bit more, just a bit more substantial really. That's just how I like my bows. If you like, if you're into gangly bows, then that's fine. Good for you. But I like a fat bow. So, <laughs> right. Why do things I say always sound silly? I don't know. 
<laughs> so you get two pieces of ribbon um, that are roughly the same. They can be the same. One can be a bit smaller. And then what you're going to do is just overlap them like so. Turn it around and see if that's how you like it to be. Now on this ribbon it's really, really pretty because I've got this little robin here. So I would quite like the robin to be there. So that's, for me, that's good how it is. So what I'm going to do is... Just attach the ribbon together at the bottom just by putting the needle through a few times and then you can either go in out in out or if you want to be even quicker than that you can just put it around and give it a really good pull but making sure that this thumb here is holding it nice and tightly otherwise if you let go that's it you're back to a gangly bow yeah. tip when you're doing making things like this as well is don't have your thread too long because unless you're quite careful it can get tangled especially if you're new to doing things like this so there we have one as I say if you like the bow like that you could use it like that even pop a button in the middle but I'm not so keen on that style so I'm going to double it up, double up this second piece and do exactly the same. And then do the little sneaky way and just put it around okay now what you can now do you can either tie that off like we did this one or if you think your fingers are up to it you can put that new bow on top of that one you've already pulled it around a few times and then pull them around together so that all of a sudden you've got a much thicker bow because you've doubled it up you see so again pulling it tight holding it really firmly as you're doing that so we'll just tie that off and cut the thread any loose threads and now you've got this whatever way up you want it really this lovely little doubled up bow and what you can do you can leave it like that or you could put some string around the middle maybe I actually added a button here to my one I think for a change stuff it I might add some of this um, string because I think it looks really pretty and it's just something a bit different I do go for buttons quite a lot actually it's nice to have a change just tie it as though you're doing the start of a shoelace and go to there and you can see the little cute little ribbon as well and just cut those And there's your third little bow. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And that maybe you'll have a go at these bows. And um, you can use them in craft. Uh, you can also use them if you like to sew so they're really versatile and they can be quite addictive actually you sort of walk around your house like I do and um, 
you know, just pick things up and think, oh, that looked pretty with a bow, you know. So with that. 